Hi there and welcome to Tactical MagFed. In this video I'm going to be showing you my ultimate counted red dot sight setup for my MagFed marker. Check it out. Hi there and welcome back to Tactical MagFed. As I said in the intro, this video is about uh, my setup for a budget um, counted site setup for my uh, MagFed marker. Uh, this isn't just going to be suitable for MagFed markers. Um, you're probably going to get a lot of use out of this um, for things like BB rifles, gas powered um, airsoft rifles, um, air rifles themselves. So there's a lot of applications for this wouldn't recommend this budget setup for a real firearm. Air, air powered stuff, um, yes, anything above that is probably a no. Okay, so with that said, um, we're gonna need to get our T15 out here and I'll run through um, the setup I've got. Okay, so here's my T15, completely degassed and no paint in it whatsoever. And it's got the safety on for all you um, <laughs> diehard safety guys out there. Okay, so I've got my uh, variable scope on the top here and I've got um, replica clone Trigicon uh, red dot uh, RMR I believe it is on the side here. Uh, I had no end of issues getting kind of a decent fit setup for this marker. Um, I put the drop down ASA on the back here to give me more space with my mask. Um, over the, the gas stock here. So if you're interested in um, in that, there is another video I'll link down in the description or it'll be at the end of this video, so check that one out later. Um, that gives me another inch of clearance on my mask. I've got a riser here that I've put my, um, I think they're one inch, one inch risers on here with a 30 mil, um, a 30 mil fitting for my um, variable scope. And then I've got a canted mount on the bottom here. Um, this this is a, a budget kind of setup. I did look at trying to get something purpose made for all these things, but um, you're looking at you, you're touching into the realms of real firearms and all that all that kind of stuff because it's rated for real firearms use. Super expensive, so I'm not I'm not in the market for spending two hundred and fifty pounds, you know, three hundred dollars plus for mounts and things like that. Um, especially if I'm putting replica and budget um, scopes on there. <laughs> I, I don't own real, real real firearms and probably never going to own a real firearm um, like this in the while I'm here in the UK. Anyway, what I'll do next is I'll just, I'll, I'll remove this scope setup off of here and then I'll break down all the individual parts and why I've chosen them. Um, I'll also go through kind of a history of the mounts that led me to this and some of the frustrations that I had. Okay, so without further ado, let's get this uh, thing off of it. So, do, 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 do. there it is. So like I say, I've got this first mount on here. Okay. Uh, put that to one side and then we have the canted mount on the top rail here it's probably going to be easy to show you on the, the top slide um, the top camera so it might seem pretty simple to get a canted red dot you just well I thought it was I thought I'd just buy a, a riser with a top rail and a count and a 45 degree side rail happy days job done to a certain degree that did work but um, I had loads of issues with <laughs> when you put these this mount together, wherever you try and place the canted mount on that slanted rail, and I'll, I will get it out in a minute and show you, it was in the way. It was either in the way of the adjustments, the mounts, um, it was just a real pig. I got it on there, but it was <laughs> it's a real Frankenstein's kind of monster. Um, I don't really want to recreate that. So if I get this second mount off. What this actually is, is two little, um, two sing two, they come as a pair, you buy them as a pair. You can either have them close together or separated like I have, but there's two little slanted mounts and they go 
off to the side and I will I will just I'll get this off and then I'll show you what I mean um, So just put that um, out the way for a second. What I'll do is I'll quickly line up some of the other mounts and stuff that I've been using so I can compare and contrast and show you the evolution. So here we go. Okay, so previously on <laughs> Tactical Macro, um, I've had all sorts of risers. I had a straight up riser. I couldn't find it, it's kicking around somewhere. But I had a straight up uh, one inch riser with just one rail on it. I thought to get a canted setup, I just need um, a riser with a canted piece on it. Happy days. So you can see that up on the, on the top screen there. You've got one rail there and one rail there. But what this doesn't do, you sh the, the problem with this setup is you share this rail. So there's not there's not two separate rails, it's you're either on that one or on that one. So, uh, how's the best, what's the best way to show you this? If I take this off here, I'll show you this one easier as well. So when you've got that on that rail, it then limits, it limits the space you have to put a counted setup on there. So if you just wanted to sit that site on there without anything else, it gets in the way. So I couldn't get that on there um, as, a, as a standard site. So then you end up having to fiddle around with these, put them on, put that one as far back and that one as far forward, and then try and squeeze it in. Um, I managed to get it on there, switching between all different kinds of heights of mounts for the RMR. Um, but it was a real, it was a real pain, and I wasn't happy with it. I took it to, uh, I took that set up to Ragnarok, and I, I couldn't really get, I don't, um, when I had it, when I had it set up, and I was at game, I couldn't really, I could get behind this site, okay. But when I was moving to the, when I was doing some CQB stuff, and I was moving to the red dot on the county rail, it, it was all a bit too, um, tucked in and hidden here. I couldn't couldn't get behind it very well. So what, essentially what I needed to do is to bring it out and then count it, <laughs> which is what all the, the, the purpose-built mounts do. They kind of, they don't just go diagonally straight on the side here, they kind of come out a bit and then and count off and you can put them anywhere on your rail. So I binned this um, item um, and I think at the time I had it set up with something, um, I did try and set it up with that, the limitations of setting up something like this on a riser, you got the same. You got the same thing. You have to have something that takes up a lot of real estate on that on that riser, and you're limiting yourself to a very finite area on there. So um, that mount, kind of, that was the one I had it set up on originally. Um, had to get rid of that. Had to get shot of that, and essentially had to resort to two single, uh, I think they're one inch, one inch, 30 mil one inch rises um, to hold that. Um, these, this setup here, uh, I will, what I can do, as I take, I'll take this apart for you so you can see it. This is where I'm gonna have to fish for an Allen key that will fit. Let's try that one. Nope. So once again, um, I wanted this to be a budget setup. Um, <laughs> I could, I couldn't. I, I struggled to find something that was reasonably priced. But effectively, I kind of stumbled across these two items. They, they will. They, you can fit them side by side as one solid sort of mount like that. Um, they're about 
nine pounds, ten pounds here in the UK. I'll put every, everything that I show you here. I'll put links down in the description, and hopefully it will even out across all the different borders that where people watch this. But you'll get an idea of the cost of things. Um, these are about nine pounds um, for the pair, and as you can see, they come out to the side. If I compare that to here, okay, where that would be there. There's a, an offset of about, it's about half an inch, I suppose. So it, it sits there and comes out to the side. Um, it, doesn't look, it doesn't look like it's a big margin or a big difference, but what that does is it gives you um, the space to clear the mounts here, clear the side of this, um, clear the side of your variable scope so you're out of the way of your adjustments and all your other mounts that you need to get that on there. Um, uh, it's a ridiculous thing, but yeah, that small margin of half an inch gives you a lot more, um, excuse the pun, scope <laughs> and options to move around on there. Um, and again, with having this top rail free, um, this is, I don't know what you call this mount, but essentially it's got a, a mounting bracket this side and then it has nothing here. So it gives you, it gives you the opportunity to put things underneath it without interfering with anything that's on the top. Uh, which is effectively what I've done. So this goes onto the marker. I can use a, a lower a lower riser on the top of my marker because I've got the drop down ASA on the back, which drops an inch. And this is about um, half an inch, so I've got one and a half inches, if you like, from <laughs> my cheek on the buttstock to the bottom of the scope mount. So it gives me plenty of room to get behind the scope. So effectively, I just plonk this on to here. I can't remember exactly where it goes. That goes on here. Uh, this is just uh, a standard RMR with a standard RMR to 20mm Picatinny um, riser on it. I can't remember if this one came with this particular site, but I basically chose the lowest profile one I could find just to minimize the bulk and the weight. Um, to get this on here, I just uh, yes, this one. Um, there, I put because these are. I think that I think that's why I ended up doing it. I put it on here so that it would um, sit uh, either side of those bolts, just to make it a little bit more secure. Uh, I would recommend when you're doing this, uh, and I will be. I will be doing this. I've got some. Um, might not be the wise idea just to. Do that up and that's one on. Okay, so I've got them on there. Put some blue Loctite on the bolt because um, it's on a, a gas powered um, marker. Um, it's got the full auto kit in here, so it's got more recoil than um, most paintball markers and things like that, and it's pretty decent. So it will shake the bolts loose. So it might pay just to put some blue Loctite on some of these bolts, if not all of them. So that goes on there, and then effectively what happens is that sits underneath that site, and that gives you the options then. You've got a lot more options to put that there, and there's no interference. You can adjust, you can adjust your windage and everything on your red dot, and you can adjust everything, I'll show you up there. So it gives you, you get access to all your adjustments without having to take anything off which was a pain because it got in the way of everything last time. So there are all the bits there. Um, you've also got the option to put your um, Perspex protector in front of your scope there. It keeps it nice and low to the marker. Uh, so I'll quickly pop this back on. The only downside of any to this setup is that you have to put this on first. So you kind of have to figure out where you want to put it. Uh, I can't really remember. So I'll, I'll sort this out and fine tune it when I, uh, after this video, put it back how I like it. Yeah, you put this mount on first. On there, and then this mount on second. I always set this up so it goes with the last on the last Picatinny 
um, section here, so it's always easy because it, it's a bit of a pig setting the um, variable scopes up because they're difficult to uh, actually view them if they're at the wrong on the too far forward or too far back. Anyway, so there you go. I don't know if this will come out, but there's the there's the counted setup from above. Um, as I say, you've got access to everything. You can adjust everything you need. It's not too tight, um, and if I can get away with pointing this at the camera. <laughs> you can see, I've got my beard up over here, and I can easily get behind that. And I've got it's a couple of inches there between my cheek and my mask. I can get behind that. I get behind there without even having to get my mask onto my buttstock. So plenty of clearance for the mask. Uh, I've been playing around with this setup for quite some time now, um, <laughs> trying to find a way to get a budget set up for these mounts. Um, so let's try and price this up. Nine, nine freebie with the um, RMR. I think that was 15 and these were, I think they were about 14 each. So what's that, 30, for about 40, 50 pounds. This mount setup um, works really well um, compared to spending hundreds um, to get real steel equivalents. I think that's pretty decent. Um, there might be a few airsoft guys out there that are looking for stuff for gas blowback rifles and stuff like that. So hopefully this might help you guys out as well. Um, anyone with air rifles that wants to put a canted sight on, who knows. Um, but this really is um, a decent setup. On a paintball marker, this is what I'll be using when I need to have two different styles of scopes. Uh, mostly I kind of use one of these kind of sights for um, a little clone, uh, what they, an aim point clone um, for CQB and stuff. Um, but if I need to do some woods ball and switch it up a little bit in buildings and on open ground, I might stick something like this on. Uh, it's a really decent setup. Um, eventually, after I spent a little bit of money on <laughs> the other mounts that I didn't need, this is, has turned out to be a really good option. So if you are looking to do this, um, hopefully this might save you a little bit of pain trying to figure out what might work and fit together. Um, definitely recommend a drop down ASA adapter of some description to get your air stock out the way um, and it also reduces the bulk on the top of your marker because you don't have to build it up so high um, with the risers. Um, I haven't weighed it, I don't know what it weighs, if I do get around to weighing it I'll put it in the description how much it weighs but it doesn't add too much weight. The Most of the weight is the actual sight so if you've got a more expensive sight that's lighter it will reduce the weight of the setup. Okay so Everything will be linked down in the description. Uh, full disclaimer, some of the links, if they're eBay or Amazon, um, I'll get uh, an affiliate kind of, um, <laughs> and, uh, I'll get an affiliate kickback from it. It doesn't cost you any more as a purchaser, it just means that through those platforms they um, give me uh, a percentage of the money they make off it as a kickback for directing you to them. Okay, so, let me know your thoughts on this setup. If you've got any questions, hit me in the comments below. Um, if you want to support the channel, check out the support the channel in the description, the support the channel section in the description. Uh, it lists out all the ways you can uh, either contact me or um, support the channel. Um, easiest and free way to support the channel is give this video a like, <laughs> give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you haven't already subscribed, that will greatly help the channel and it will help me get all my content out to new viewers and new subscribers. Uh, if this has been helpful for you and you think it might help someone else, hit the share. <laughs> Click the share in the, in the video description and, um, and pass it on to any forums and people that you know. Anyway, I've been rabbiting on for far too long now. Thank you very much for watching um, and I'll see you in the next video.